So when you came to that priest, uh, you know, kind of with that open heart and you had that meeting with him and you walked away just kind of like, hey, thanks for the death sentence. You know, <laughs> you know I'm out. Count me out. Sign me out. No interest. <laughs> you know, what could he, you know, and I'm sure he had the best interest as well. Like, hey, I want to help this guy avoid, you know, sin and isolation from Christ. And, you know, maybe he had these great intentions, but his pastoral approach maybe not have been what you need at that moment. What could he have said at that moment that might have engaged you of like, hey, there's there's hope here. You know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's, you know, there's something in this for me. You know, whereas, you know, maybe his advice sent you down a path where I don't know if you struggle with this idea that you just need to pray the gay away. Mm -hmm. You know, and if and if you just do enough rosaries, your attractions are going to change. You yeah. know, and sometimes you know, God intervenes in extraordinary ways and, you know, those things happen, but, you know, we don't want to dismiss that. But at the same time, we need to avoid the opposite extreme of expecting it's always going to happen. That if, if you just get holy enough, attractions are going to flip off like a light switch. And so I think a lot of, you know, Catholic Christian individuals experience same-sex attractions think like, I just, I must be doing something wrong because mm. these attractions are still with me. So maybe God's right. displeased with me that he's not giving me that special grace. And we tend to think that this is the thing that's keeping him from us, when in reality, sometimes it's the thing that's allowing us to draw nearer to him in our weakness. So maybe speak to that of like, you know, the discouragement that sets in if you're trying to pray the gay away or the, uh, or the approach that that priest may have taken that, that might have, you know, got you a little more hopeful that there's something in the church for you. Yeah, absolutely. So first I'll address the, the priest question. Um, in regards to the priest, I think um, he, I don't think I was affirmed enough in my identity because ultimately I think it comes down to we will direct our actions to who we believe ourselves to be. So if I believe myself to be a son of God and I truly believe that, I will direct my act. I will not pursue other men because I know that as a son of God, I'm created for, for greater than that. Um, and so I think in regards to when I was first, um, you know, um, kind of sat down and talked with this priest, it was very much like these are the rules. And that's, you know, that's good and that is useful because we do need to know truth. But at the same time, I think if we're, especially a truth this, you know, impactful on a person's life, we need to make them desire that. And for to make someone want to pursue the Lord, um, we have to really um, emphasize the fact that they are seen how they're seen in the Lord's eyes. So I'm not going to want to pursue a God that sees me as, you know, absolute garbage. And so I need to be affirmed in the fact that like the Lord doesn't see you as that God doesn't see you as this dirty, disordered, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like he sees you as beloved. He sees you as like his, he wants you to start. If we emphasize that, which didn't really happen in that session with that priest, um, I feel like that would have just set me on a much more positive, like these aren't just rules. This is a, this is a prize that I'm fighting for, and I want this prize, and I desire it because I desire the Lord. Um, so I would say that um, was something that was lacking. I think also just resources, unfortunately, of, you know, like, this is the truth. This is the life you're supposed to live. Go at it. It's like, okay, where am I supposed to go from here, though? Who can I talk to about this? Like, who, where are the young people who understand what I'm going through? Where, you know, like, I had no, no, nothing else to turn to, and so I think that is why I do the ministry that I do um, on my online presence. And that's why I give talks. That's why I go meet uh, different teenagers, different college kids, because I want people to see that there's young people who think that chastity and know that chastity is freeing and it's good. And it's not just an idea, an idea that a 80 year old man can like talk about on stage or a priest can talk about. Like, it's like, it's very much that mindset of like, who are you to tell me that chastity is good if you're not like if you don't understand this what I'm going through you don't understand um, how it how it feels to abstain from same sex attractions when you yourself don't experience them and so I want to be that ex that's why I'm doing what I'm doing is to be that example of like I know what you're going through I carry this cross it is heavy it's hard but it's also so freeing to bring this to the Lord so I think that was another thing that was missing was just like reliable resources of like these are people in the church who know what you're going through and can help you because realistically there's not a lot. And that's that's why the world um, is so much more appealing, I think, in many ways is because in the church, we have very little, you know, not to obviously she's she's working on it. And by the grace of God, there are more and more resources uprising like Courage International, Eden Invitation, Anna Carter, different things like that. Um, but we still have a lot of work to go. And there's you know, there's no saints who look like us yet. And so it's hard to look at that and see no hope, but yet look at the world and see all these 
you know, gay couples who are on TV and on movies who seem so happy and fulfilled. And, you know, it's, you can't even compare the two. So, yeah. And then if you could speak also to the, the, the pray the gay away, did you go through yes, yes, kind yes, of yes. a dark night, so to speak, of wrestling with that mentality? Yeah, so it's actually, um, it's actually very interesting for me and my story. Um, for some reason, I did not fixate on that. Um, because most people, when they will talk on this, and a lot of my friends who experience same-sex attraction, almost all of them, you will hear at one point or another, like relentlessly prayed for this to go away. Um, I don't know why, for some reason, that wasn't my main focus. Um, maybe it's because I've just been the type of kid who, like, if there's a problem, I never just, like, want it to go away. I want to, like, somehow resolve it. So maybe I was just trying to think of a way to resolve this, not to, like, just dissipate altogether. Um, but I will speak into that whole praying the gay way thing. Um, I think it's very important, especially within the church, that – and I love that you do this, Jason, because I know you do this in your uh, a lot of your resources on the topic – that we differentiate the acts from the attractions. Um, because the reason I think so many people are in that mindset of like, oh, I can't, I cannot experience same sex attractions and be holy is because they read the catechism and they see like, okay, um, homosexual dot, 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 like objectively disordered, intrinsically disordered, evil, evil. And it's like, they automatically assume like, oh, okay, like the homosexual acts are evil. So um, the homosexual desires are evil, the homosexual person's evil, all of it's evil. We have to throw it all away because none of it can be brought to the foot of the cross. And I think it's very important for us to be able to differentiate, like, these are the attractions and what are you going to do about the attractions? Because we know that the acts acting on the attractions is what is <laughs> sinful. But the attractions themselves is very important to, you know, like really like emphasize um, the the morality behind them and that the attractions themselves, um, you're not sinning if you experience same-sex attraction you're not directly sinning um and i think that that's very important because i think a lot of people just pray the gateway because they think there's no other option um they think that holiness needs to be straight <laughs> to be attracted to the opposite sex you know um when in reality that'd be, that'd be so great I mean, wouldn't it i know like, that... i'm holy that was the <laughs> I was, that's it i know that's what i think is so funny is uh, i sit here and i'm like whenever i hear people say that it just it boggles my mind because i'm like like what makes you think that that's going to get you into heaven? Like what gets you into heaven and like what brings you closer to the Lord is like bringing him your struggles. So if you're struggling with this, that is what you should bring into the Lord. Not, you know, because you could be attracted to the opposite sex and be struggling with lust and that's disordered. <laughs> like, you know, like it's like these things, like we have to face the reality that I think there's also an overemphasis on like homosexual attraction is like the ultimate gravest worst thing that anyone can ever um, experience and like it's the gravest sin and this and that and in reality sexual sin in general you know we need to talk about the fact that you know same-sex attraction like yes it exists and um yes homosexual acts are a problem but also fornication is a problem and also you know struggling with pornography is a problem that needs to be addressed like these there is a wide range of sexual sin that needs to be addressed um and we need to be willing to bring that to the foot of the cross if you're struggling with pornography we need to you need to be willing to take that to the lord if you're struggling with same-sex attraction take that to the lord he wants these he wants these things he wants these broken parts of our hearts um that's what he wants to mend he doesn't want the pretty parts of you that's not it he wants the the ugly grotesque um just raw vulnerable parts of our human beings um so yeah i don't know if that kind of answered oh, your yeah. question Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that little clip, but if you want to see the whole episode where this came from, just click the link here. And in the meantime, we want to invite you to help us share this message, and there's a couple things you can do real quick. Number one, if you like or comment or share this video, YouTube will actually show it to more people. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. We release videos every single day, and you'll be notified as soon as those come out. If you want to help us also to spread this message, you can support us at Patreon dot com slash Jason Everett that helps us to create these videos and show them to the whole world. God bless.